Well, now that we have a cartridge that has CPM software on it, what can we do with it? What use is this? What use is this cartridge with Microsoft Basic on it? CPM was designed by Gary Kildall, the founder of Digital Research Incorporated, in 1974 as an operating system for the new microcomputers that were starting to become available. It allowed systems of different designs to share the same OS as long as they had an 8080 or Z80 processor, at least 16K of RAM, and a disk drive. The OS was split into three parts, the BIOS which interfaced with the hardware and was specific to the computer it was running on, the BDOS which interfaced programs to the BIOS that was not hardware specific, and CCP which interfaced the user with the BDOS and again was not hardware specific. By 1983, when the Atom was released, CPM was the dominant OS for business computers and had a sizable home market share. The use of CPM dropped quickly though when IBM introduced the PC and its OS, PC-DOS, also known as MS-DOS. In 1984, Coleco and Digital Research developed a version of CPM 2.2 to run on the Atom. This version was stymied somewhat due to the Atom's video processor, only allowing up to 40 columns where most CPM programs used an 80 column screen. To further make it harder to use on the Atom, they decided to use a 32 column virtual window mode presumably for the ability to use colors. If you needed 80 columns, you could attach an external terminal and serial card to the Atom. But even with this limitation, CPM works very well on the Atom. When developing CPM for the Atom, someone lost in the passing of time had the idea of allowing CPM to load software from a cartridge into a RAM disk. This may not seem like much until you think about it. First off, CPM for the Atom came out towards the end of the Atom's brief time in the spotlight. The disk drives were struggling to get out the door, and there was no official expansion RAM available at the time. But even with these obstacles, somebody was thinking ahead. Before I go too much farther, let me take a moment to explain how CPM loads into the Atom, as this is crucial to understanding how a cartridge could be beneficial. A tape or disk media is broken down into 1K blocks of data. 256 of them for a tape, 160 for a disc. The first block is the bootloader. When you reset the Atom and a tape or disc is in the drive, the Atom will load this first block into memory location C800 hex and then jump to the code loaded to execute it. For a tape or disc containing SmartBasic, this loader will then load SmartBasic into memory and execute it. For CPM, this bootloader does other things. We know this because of a fantastic disassembly of the bootloader from George Havach. I'm not sure when this was written, but since he includes his CompuServe address in the header, I'm sure you can get the idea that this was written a long time ago. Now after setting up some storage variables, the loader then checks for the presence of expansion RAM. If this isn't found, it will continue loading the BIOS, BDOS, and CCP from the tape or disk. These are contained in the next 13 blocks on the media. After that, it jumps to the CCP, and you are now at the A prompt. If an expansion RAM is found, it will test the first 5K of RAM to make sure that it is usable, and if so, it then copies over code that is used to move data to and from the expansion RAM. After this, it then looks to see if a cartridge is installed and has the proper identifier. If not, it then jumps to loading the BIOS, BDOS, and CCP. If a cartridge is installed and it has the proper identifier, then it will copy the data from the cartridge to the RAM disk, and after that, jump to loading the BIOS, BDOS, and CCP. To better understand all of this, here is how memory is configured in the Atom. In the first column, you have two banks of RAM, each 32K in size, that makes up the maximum of 64K that the CPU can address. In the next column, you have an expansion RAM, which is 64K of additional RAM and two banks of 32K each. The third column shows how the memory is allocated when running in ColecoVision mode. 
There are two additional memory configurations that are not shown. One is with the Smart Rider ROM in the lower bank and the other is with the expansion ROM that can be installed on a card in slot 2 in the lower bank. You will notice that EOS is not shown. This is in the Smart Rider ROM and is copied to the upper bank of RAM when you use a program that needs the EOS. This shows how the CPM RAM disk is set up using the expansion RAM if it is installed. The first 2K of the RAM holds a buffer and the code that is used to transfer data to and from the RAM disk. The RAM disk is automatically set up and can only be disabled by removing the expansion RAM card. A CPM software cartridge is basically a copy of a RAM disk from 0800 hex through 7800 hex for a total of 30K of data. Since a standard cartridge can only hold 32K of data at the most and a bank is 32K in size, this is a compromise to keep the cartridge from overwriting the buffer and I.O. code that is at the base of the lower bank of expansion RAM. This leaves 2046 bytes in a cartridge not used. I use this area to hold code that is used by mount.com. Okay, now that we know that CPM can load a cartridge, what use is it? This is a valid question. If you have a disk drive, why would you want software on cartridge when you can just buy, borrow, or get a copy from someone else? I think this is the actual point of the cartridge. Imagine a system where you have one data drive and a memory expansion. RAM at that time was much cheaper than a disk drive. You use your copy to format and copy the CPM system over to other tapes that you would use for data and then put the CPM tape away. Remember how CPM is stored? The first 14 blocks are used for the boot, BIOS, BDOS, and CCP. If do not copy the system to a new data pack, those 14 blocks are locked away. So it makes sense to make every tape bootable and have the OS on it. Now we put in a cartridge, set like this one with Microsoft Basic on it. Then we reset the system. The system, as we explained earlier, loads the bootloader, loads BDOS, the BIOS, and the CCP. Well, the BIOS, BDOS, and CCP. When you get to this screen, it's loading the CCP. At the same time as loading the, the bootloader, it checks for the existence of that cartridge. Well, first it checks for the existence of the RAM expansion, and if that exists, then it checks for the existence of the cartridge. And if that exists, it copies the cartridge to the RAM expansion. Once we load up CC, CPM, we're at the A prompt. If I press Shift undo, it gets rid of the smart keys that are on the screen. At this point, I can now see what's on my M drive. If I just type in directory M, you can see my M drive now has a copy of mount, copy.com, and mbasic.com. These all loaded from the cartridge. I'm going to load mbasic.com. And I want you to see how fast this loads. Instantaneously loads. Now let's see what's on the disk drive. Or on the data drive, I'm sorry. On the data drive. On a data drive, I have a program called Hello Basic. I'm going to load that. If you haven't used CPM, you will know that CPM does let you have upper and lowercase characters in the file names, but it only allows you access, access the ones with uppercase characters. So, always use uppercase characters. So I'm going to load hello.basic from the data drive, which is drive A. And if you, know, if you think about it, at this point, the only time I've used the data drive is to load my data, to boot and then load data. I've never used the data drive to load Microsoft Basic. And if I run it, this is the simple hello world. Now I'm going to go back out to the system prompt. When I go back out to the system prompt, because of the way CPM is set up, when you load a program, it removes the CCP from memory to give as much memory space to the program that you loaded. Now when you go back into CPM to the, to the prompt, B A prompt, B prompt, C prompt, whatever, it has to reload the CCP from tape. So it's going to load that again. 
So the only time the data drive is actually accessed is when you're loading the system or loading data. It's not accessed when loading stuff off the cartridge. Now I'm going to play with the cartridge. Once I get off the CPM prompt, I want to show you some things you can do with this cartridge. Alright, so now we're out here. I'm going to go to drive M again and I'm going to do a directory again. You see the files we have in here? Mount.com, copy.com, and menbasic.com. Copy.com is just a program that came with the Atom CPM unless you copy files. I put that on here because it's very small, a lot smaller than PIP, which is the standard way of doing it in CPM. In this way, you always have a program that can copy files. You don't have to have it on your data packs. So that's why I put it on there. And basics, obviously, it's Microsoft Basic. And Mount.com is a very small, it's maybe 20, 30 bytes long with some text. And what it does is it runs a routine that's stored on the cartridge, as I explained it earlier. It's stored in that section of the cartridge that's not used. And it, when you run mount.com, it'll jump to the cartridge ROM, switch in the expanded RAM in the lower 32K, copy the cartridge down to that, and then switch back out the expanded RAM and put the normal RAM in. So basically it will load in a new cartridge without having to reboot the system. So what I'm going to do, and I'm going to show you how this works right now, because I'm going to delete and base it from the M drive. You can see that it's gone. I'm going to then show you the effect of I took out a cartridge and I'm going to put a cartridge back in as if I just put in a new cartridge. Let's just say I just put in a cartridge that has Q term on it because now I want to do some DBSing. I type the word mount to load it. It just mounted the cartridge and now it reloads the CCP. Again, because we loaded some software. It's possible that I'm doing something slightly wrong with CPM that I can get out of my code without reloading the CCP if I haven't touched it. I'm going to have to look deeper into the BDOS to see if there is a call to CCP that lets me exit back out. Basically, it's a warm boot, not a cold boot. But it just did that. And remember, I deleted mbasic.com and it's back because it just reloaded the cartridge for me. So there you have it. An actual use of a CPM cartridge. There's other things that can be done on it. There is the limitation of only having 30k of data. Originally I wanted to have two cartridges. I wanted a cartridge that had mBasic on it. Then I wanted a cartridge that had Bascom. Bascom is the compiler for mBasic. But Bascom and the linker and the overlays that are required with it would take up two cartridges. So I'm still working on how to do that. I think it's possible. I think it's possible to have two cartridges. I think I can have a program akin to Mount that I can run on a cartridge that will say insert second cartridge. You put it in there and it fills the data, fills the RAM drive with the rest of the programs that are required. That's something I'm going to tinker with. I'm going to get some more EEPROMs in so I can make some extra cartridges. But for now, this is a proof in concept. It shows that CPM can load and use cartridges, and that they are very fast and very effective. Have a good day.